here we'll look at like a map of New York City. So just to give you a sense, most of New York is an island. Um, in fact, I believe the only borough, and there's five boroughs, which is uh, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, uh, Manhattan, um, and Wu-Tang, motherfucker, Staten Island, which we always kind of for forget about, okay? And Long Island is part of Queens, just, just, just so you, you get that. The only land-attached borough is the Bronx, so every, everything else is completely an island, okay? So you can see Manhattan, okay, and it's, it's really close to, to the Bronx. And um, then you have Queens, which is, again, like more of like a suburban where people had lawns and like small lawns, but lawns and picket fences and houses. Um, it was just more affluent um, area, okay? And then you have Brooklyn to the south and then Staten Island just way over, you know, uh, in its kind of own, own space. So that kind of can give you a sense of, you know, if we're like hovering over New York City, kind of understand that. And the boroughs we, we kind of want to focus on are Manhattan, okay, the Bronx, and, and Queens here, because this is where we get to kind of the next part. Now you can see this map uh, of the Bronx, and you see um, going through um, the middle of the Bronx is what's called the Cross Bronx Expressway. Now, this was, if you read in the Chang chapter, and, and, and this was something that was planned by Robert Moses. And this was like an epic, epic, you know, build, so to speak, that was highly problematic, um, very strategic in terms of the neighborhoods it targeted, which again, were largely, now that all these black and brown families had moved to the South Bronx, guess where they built this crazy expressway right through all of, all of those, um, all of those na neighborhoods. Now, you can see the whole concept of the Cross Bronx Expressway was this. It was to be able to get to this area that they were gentrifying and cleaning up Manhattan, right, all the way over across to Queens, um, without having to drive through the Bronx. And I mean drive through the Bronx, like actually drive through the neighborhood. So they built this epic highway right through the middle of all of these neighborhoods, leveling buildings, et cetera, to build it. And you'll see this in, in Rubble Kings, and we'll kind of give you a sense of its construction. So this was a highly, you know, problematic, really, in how, how it was built in the neighborhoods that, that it targeted, which was highly racialized. Um, you know, uh, this was a major project. Now this gave kind of way to a lot of, so you have all this unemployment, displacement, and then this comes through. And your once, you know, neighbor, neighborhood that was thriving, depending on, you know, who you were, um, was now in rubble, you know? And so um, it's just an important cross Bronx Expressway. Just kind of note that. And Robert Moses, who was the urban planner who, who Push, push that and wanted, wanted to, to, to build that. Um, so it was again to get from Manhattan to Queens without having to drive through um, the Bronx, okay? So again, um, you know, you have, if you read in Chang's book, you have all this stuff happening. Um, you have, um, you know, all these apartments in those areas that start, the value of them starts to go down. You start to have less and less uh, tenants. And really what started to happening, happen as the Cross Bronx Expressway went in, as these new populations of, of, of new neighbors moved in from Manhattan and places they were trying to uh, renew, uh, you really just basically start to have all these, um, particularly Jewish, uh, uh, Irish, and some Italians, uh, what's called white flight is the white people literally left those areas for, for the suburbs. And so um, real estate started to be owned by slumlords. And, you know, they maybe rented, you know, maybe some of the apartments and not all of them. And so they would stop doing maintenance. They would stop, um, you know, places wouldn't have heat or hot water. Um, or whatever, and then you know by the you know they'd stop doing enough of that, and the, you know the property values were going down, and then um, essentially what what became the most profitable thing for these slumlords was once their buildings became abandoned, was to torch them, to burn them, 
uh, where they pay someone you know 50 bucks or whatever to burn down a building and they'd collect the insurance policy on it and this was really happening in the South Bronx and so when we see some pictures of the South Bronx at this time it looks like you know if you've seen images of Syria now or you know parts of Europe during World War II it literally looks like it had been bombed it had been bombed out and you start to have these neighborhoods that are barren of people of culture of of, of identity and they're just it's just rubble um, um, and you can see some images you know of this documentary called the Bronx is burning I mean just the amount um, of, of fires in the Bronx we're talking you know 30,000 fires <laughs> in New York City um, you know from 1973 to 77 um, and you know in the early 70s and 80s think about it, this borough of New York City was 40% abandoned just to give you kind of a sense of, of what was of what was going on there um, and with all this you know all of the fires all of all of the white flight um, the po the poverty the the fact that uh, there was very limited government services in this in, in this area of the South Bronx you had you know this concept that you want to know for the test called plan shrinkage where um, the South Bronx started to then lose firefighting capacity, so fire stations closed. They start to lose uh, after-school programs, schools. They start laying off, you know, government and other service uh, people, you know, social servants of, of all types, police even, um, you know, in these areas so again you start to have less and less where people need actually you know um, more and more so they started to um, basically shrink economic or financial funding for certain types of social services in the South Bronx